A huge new Super Mario Maker 2 update is coming, and it's actually coming very soon, as in April 22nd. A new multi-platform game that's coming out in August looks a lot like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and it's time to hop on the hype train for this game. The Xbox Lockhart has been potentially leaked as well, and video game sales skyrocket in the month of March with some absolutely crazy numbers. What's going on guys, I'm RGT85, if this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, but without any further ado, let's talk about what's going on in the world of video games. So Super Mario Maker 2 of course came out last summer, and it was a pretty successful game for the Nintendo Switch. Obviously the sequel to the original Super Mario Maker on the Wii U, it allowed you to make your own Super Mario style levels in a Super Mario game, and honestly I really enjoyed the game, I'm not one for creating my own levels, as I'm very basic when it comes to stuff like that, I don't really have patience when it comes to stuff like that, but as far as actually playing other people's levels, I think that's where the game really shines, because people can be very creative, sure there's a whole bunch of trolls levels that you have to sort of sift through but I think once you find some actually good levels made in Super Mario Maker 2 it's definitely a very enjoyable time now of course one of the things that's been interesting about Super Mario Maker 2 is the fact that the game hasn't been updated nearly as much as the original Super Mario Maker was that game seemed to be getting updates all the time whereas with Super Mario Maker 2 we've only gotten one main update well last night Nintendo announced that the second and actually final update for Super Mario Maker 2 is coming and it's coming very soon as in April April 22nd, which is tomorrow if you're watching this video on April 21st. Now as far as what this Super Mario Maker 2 update entails, there's actually some pretty cool stuff that they're adding into the game. One of the things I really like is the Super Mario Brothers 2 mushroom that pretty much transforms how you play the game. Obviously in Super Mario Brothers 2, which was actually Doki Doki Panic in Japan, that's a big spoiler for you guys! That game was obviously very different from your traditional Super Mario Brothers game that we had had up until that time frame. In Super Mario Bros. 2, you could pick up your enemies instead of stomping on them. And so that is being implemented into this game, and I honestly think that's really cool. You're also getting the Super Mario Bros. 3 Frog Suit, which allows Mario to basically swim in water. So I think that's really cool as well. That's really going to add to some very creative levels. There's a whole bunch of new items that are coming into the game, but these are the two that really stuck out to me. Now, one of the things that's actually very cool as well is that all seven of the Koopa Kids are going to be available to use in this game as well. So you'll be able to create levels based around Koopa Kids and basically have them as bosses or sub bosses should you choose to do that. But obviously the biggest thing that is going on with Super Mario Maker 2's update is the ability to actually create your own Super Mario Brothers game with an actual world map. Like I think that is just absolutely awesome. That is really going to make for some very creative stuff because people are going to be essentially creating their own Super Mario Brothers 2D games from now on with a full world map. And I think that's really awesome how you can customize the world map as well and make it sort of tailor suited to the style of game that you want to play now for all the cool things with this Super Mario Maker 2 update I do have a few questions about it one thing is I feel like this might be just a tad bit too late for this game obviously this game has been out for almost a year and I feel like a lot of people have sort of moved on from this game I don't know I could be wrong on that maybe it's very popular in the streaming community but the real issue I have with this is just the fact that they didn't really do many of the cool things that they did with Super Mario Maker 1 on the Nintendo Nintendo Wii U. They didn't do any sort of stuff with like amiibo costumes or even new costumes in general. There were so many different costumes that you could do in the original Super Mario Maker that never made it over into this version of the game. Of course, there is the whole thing where there seems to be a style of game missing. With Did they mean to do that? Was that up for interpretation? Nobody really knows. But overall, it's definitely a very awesome update. Obviously, this is a free update as well. So I might actually check out some Super Mario Maker 2 stuff. I haven't played that game in quite a while, but I think people are going to be very creative with creating their own worlds and things like that and I'm curious to see how the Super Mario Brothers 2 mushroom sort of impacts the gameplay as well so like I said this is a free update it comes out on April 22nd and that's very soon yesterday Nintendo released a trailer for a game on their YouTube channel and it definitely put it immediately on my radar and I was like what is this game I want it and I want it now and this is a game called Windbound now Windbound is actually a multi-platform release this game will be coming out onto the PS4 the Xbox one and the Nintendo switch so no matter what system you have you'll be able to check out this game it comes out on august 28th and 
Just look at the game. It's literally the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild meets Wind Waker, and I am all for that. It is time to hop on the Windbound hype train. When this game comes out in August and everyone's like, oh, Windbound is so cool. Why did nobody talk about it? I want you people to say, well, RGT talked about it way back in April when nobody knew what this game was. I am absolutely in love with the style of this game, and some people are going to say, well, you know, it's just a Breath of the Wild clone. It's just a, you know, Wind Waker clone. It's just sort of mishmashing those two things. I'm sorry. Is that necessary? a bad thing let's look at the uncharted series let's be real folks the uncharted series is literally tomb raider with a dude like it doesn't mean that that's going to be a bad thing what was banjo kazooie it was essentially a mario 64 clone like i don't understand why people get so hung up on the whole clone thing especially when it is a clone of a game that is absolutely awesome these are the types of games that people should be making these are the types of games that people should be looking into creating their own sort of things inspired by these awesome games if a game is awesome why wouldn't you want to emulate that style? So Windbound, like I said, it comes out on August 28th. Check out the full trailer over on Nintendo's YouTube channel because I think this game looks absolutely awesome and I want everyone to be on board with this game. And if it sucks, well, I'm sorry. Yesterday on the channel, we talked about the potential for a PlayStation 5 event and an Xbox Series X event to happen in the month of May. It definitely seems like these events are going to happen because we actually got some new information from Windows Central about the Xbox Series X event, and it's actually very interesting because it looks like not only is Microsoft going to be potentially talking about the Xbox Series X, but they're also going to be talking about the Xbox Lockhart. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what the Xbox Lockhart is, it seems like Microsoft could potentially be releasing two systems at the launch of the Xbox Series X. Of course, there would be the Xbox Series X, which is the premium system, and then there would be the Xbox Lockhart, which is an all-digital system that is substantially cheaper than what the Xbox Series X brings to the table, but it's still in the Xbox Series X sort of family of systems. Now, you can sit here and say a lot of things about all-digital systems. The PSP Go, the Xbox One Sad, these didn't really light the world on fire, but it seems like Microsoft is sort of pushing in this direction. Well, we actually got some information from Windows Central about what the Xbox Lockhart is going to potentially have when it comes to terms of power. So basically, the Xbox Lockhart is going to be a low-priced, entry-level, next-generation console. And it looks like the Xbox Lockhart is going to have around four teraflops and will have limited next-generation features. Now, also at this event, there's supposedly going to be some information on upcoming games that will be coming to the Xbox series of consoles. But really, what stands out to me is that the Xbox Lockhart is going to be a four-teraflop system. Now, if you know anything about me, I don't really care about teraflops, but I do know basic math. And a few days ago on the channel, I was kind of hyping up the Xbox One X because I feel like at $300 and less, this is actually a very viable system. Of course, all of the games that come to the Xbox series of consoles for the first year or two will not be Xbox Series X exclusive. They have to work on the whole variety of Xbox One consoles when it comes to first party titles. Now, if the Xbox Lockhart is going to be a four teraflop system, like I said, I know basic math and the Xbox One X is a six teraflop system. So the Xbox One X is actually a stronger system than the Xbox Lockhart. Now, how much cheaper can the Xbox Lockhart potentially be? Is this going to be a $200 system or less? Because really, if it's the same price of the Xbox One X, what would be sort of the point of picking up this system on day one? Is this going to be somewhat of a mistake for Microsoft to even look at doing something like the Xbox Lockhart when you already have the Xbox One X available on the marketplace that could be your cheaper alternative? I'm not quite sure how I feel about this, honestly. Obviously, I'll have to see what this system brings to the table. It could end up being very very, very cheap. The limited next generation features though is kind of worrisome, so I'm definitely gonna have to take a wait and see approach with the Xbox Lockhart. I think the Xbox Series X sounds very appetizing from what we've heard and seen so far, but the Xbox Lockhart, that's definitely a big question. All I know is May is shaping up to be a very exciting month for video games. And finally, real world events pretty much shut down the United States of America since the month of March, but that did not stop people from buying video games because video game sales were absolutely through the roof. We're gonna highlight two games and then talk about Nintendo Switch sales because Nintendo Switch sales are an absolute fire. The first game we're going to talk about is Final Fantasy VII Remake. Now, I have actually completed this game and really, I really enjoyed this game. I know there's a lot of people out there that didn't like some of the things about it. I know there's a lot of people out there that maybe necessarily didn't like the ending of the game, which I absolutely 
absolutely love. But Final Fantasy VII Remake has shipped and sold digitally 3.5 million copies in just three days worldwide. So obviously this game has been a rousing success for Square Enix. I don't think many people denied that this game was going to be very successful, but obviously with real world situations happening, it was a bit harder to get a physical copy of the game. I actually just picked up the game digitally because I was just like, whatever, I don't really collect all that much for the PlayStation 4 to begin with, but I was definitely very happy to see that this game is doing so well because I really enjoyed my time with the game. It took me about 34 hours to complete. I skipped some of the side quests as well, but definitely a super enjoyable game. Of course, Animal Crossing New Horizons came out in the month of March and wow, that game seems to be pretty popular. Maybe I should rebrand to an Animal Crossing channel and get those sweet, sweet YouTube views. But Animal Crossing really just crushed everything with just physical sales. It's already the best selling game in the Animal Crossing franchise in the US in just a couple weeks. And Animal Crossing has sold very, very well. When you look at Animal Crossing sales on stuff like the Wii and the 3DS, like this game was no slouch, but Animal Crossing has already surpassed that on the Nintendo Switch. And that's not even counting the digital stuff with the game as well, because Nintendo actually doesn't report the digital sales and the NPD numbers, it's just the physical sales. So it was pretty hard to get a copy of Animal Crossing physically, and a lot of people I feel like got this game digitally. I know OJ from Player Essence actually gave away 10 copies of this game on one stream, and I didn't win a single one. I, I don't want to buy the game, but if I won it in a raffle, you know, that, that'd be a little bit different. But yeah, obviously this game is selling just ridiculously well. It's already the second best selling game for 2020 in just a couple weeks as well. So obviously people are very excited for Animal Crossing. I think this game is going to be one of the highest, if not the highest selling games on the Nintendo Switch. And it's just absolutely fascinating to see. Now, speaking of the Nintendo Switch, well, Nintendo Switch sales are on absolute fire. The Nintendo Switch hardware sales have doubled year over year compared to March 2019 to March 2020. So obviously a lot of people are wanting to get their hands on a Nintendo Switch during their quarantine. It's actually an all time record for Nintendo it's actually an all-time record for hardware sales in the month of March, topping March 2017, which of course was when the Nintendo Switch was released. So this is the fastest selling system of all time in a single month on any sort of platform, including the PlayStation variety of systems and the Xbox and even Sega. Remember when Sega made consoles? It's the highest first quarter for hardware unit sales since the Nintendo DS in the first quarter of 2010. Like the Nintendo Switch is just on absolute fire right now. Now, of course, some of that probably has to to do with the fact of the thing that we talked about yesterday with people wanting to scalp the Nintendo Switch. But at the end of the day, Nintendo is obviously riding a high right now with Nintendo Switch sales. Nintendo has reported that they are upping production of the Nintendo Switch as well due to shortages that have been happening pretty much worldwide. Everyone seems to want to get their hands on the Nintendo Switch. I think Animal Crossing is definitely playing a very big part of that. But really, as someone who's more interested in what else comes to the Nintendo Switch, I'm actually very excited for this. Obviously, the more a system sells, the more that third-party companies want to put their games on the system and I think we're gonna see some very very interesting third-party games end up coming to the Nintendo switch very soon obviously May is already shaping up to be a pretty crazy month with games like the Bioshock collection and Borderlands and XCOM series that have never been on a Nintendo platform before so definitely very positive stuff very awesome to see the video game industry thriving right now and just very cool stuff in general all right, so that is going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on everything in the comments section down below. And as always, thank you guys for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Be sure to check out other videos on the channel. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.